All right. Well, as they say, open source is a collaborative sport. Um, I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. We've only got 15 minutes, and we have a little bit less now. I'm Sal Kimmick. We're talking about the projects at the CCC. Before we do that, I need to give you a little bit of context. I'm going to tell you what the definition of confidential computing is and how, really, secure primitives fit into that. We'll talk about the projects, and then I'll tell you about three open calls for mentorship that we have coming up. So, at the Confidential Computing Consortium, we define confidential computing as the protection of data in use, this is data actively being computed, by performing computation in a hardware-attested, trusted execution environment. Now, to visualize that, it looks like this. If you're doing cloud computing, you may be much more aware of the idea of VMs. That is conceptually much more focused on isolating your uh, on uh, isolating workload from workload or uh, workload from host, um, or other way around, host from workload. But in this case, we are really, really interested in the sincere condition of not wanting to have to have any form of derivative trust even to the platforms that we rely on. And that is why we would compute within a trusted execution environment. Because if I am relying on architecture, which is performing a type 3 isolation, I also have type 1 and 2. It costs a little bit more, and it moves a little bit slower. So there are specific conditions where the sensitivity of the data or the sensitivity of the transactions, this could be the sensitivity of the algorithms themselves, may necessitate the usage of a TEE. So with that, I think we have a better understanding of what we mean when we are expressing this definition. And now, let's jump through all of the 13 projects that we have available. One of the best ways, I believe, to get an idea of an ecosystem is to go through and do a couple of semantic analyses on just the readmes. This is how a developer is communicating their technology stack. This is the top 25 words across every readme that is currently available within the CCC at this time. This represents the most long-standing technical terms around which this field has developed. Now, if we take that up to a top 50, this is going to give you a broader context into the way that this is evolving and why it is a rapidly emerging field. And if you are a developer in this space, a couple of those red words are going to be incredibly surprising to you until our final slide where I explain why. So, when we are functioning in this space, this is all being developed over specifically the secure kernel which functions with secure primitives. This is a way of thinking about zero knowledge, zero proof environments, and we want to ensure that we are focusing on confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So a couple of these are examples that have been longstanding that you're probably familiar with when you're thinking about really serious security, but I don't think you contextualize it to the kernel often where it's important to understand that when we think about secure primitives and when we think about this style of development, we are always sincerely asking the question if we have the complete gap that we think we are representing in our threat model. And at any time, if we have a better form of technology to replace one of those primitives, we will absolutely use that. So a great example of that and a way that that's developing in the Linux Foundation right now are discussions that are being had between the CCC and the post-quantum research that's also going on. When that is ready, we will be ready to implement that. So I think one of the great examples uh, is that we have Keystone using a very clear uh, basis of secure primitives. And I think it's probably our strongest example. If you want to go and look and understand this architectural thinking and reasoning, this project is probably the best one for you to play with. And to communicate this in meme format, when we are continuously begging the question, is remote attestation actually trust? We mean this in the most serious way, and we are continuously making sure that is true. So I have now gone and grouped our CCC portfolio by platform providers, mostly because this helps you to understand the contextual use. The CCC is a portfolio that covers cloud and IoT, and it's particularly being used for federated compute. All three of those look different, and they have different end users. 
So I'll start with some of our frameworks. These are projects, but they're more so to help you get set up. And they do not have logos, but the rest of them do. The certifier framework is what you're gonna use to define your trust policies. It really gets you set up. And you can check that out on the uh, GitHub. These get more complex as we go on. You can lean on SPDM tools. Uh, so this is gonna provide you some of your protocols for secure uh, computation. Again, easy to implement. Now let's get into some of the projects. I have provided you this QR code uh, that should work, and you can contact me or go to the GitHubs for any of these. So, uh, Enarchs exists to provide a serverless platform. I think it's important to understand that this provides a sort of WASM level uh, engagement, and it uh, uniquely performs over all of the platforms. Um, and we have some developers and maintainers in the room today to represent it. Uh, there is Veracruz, which is uh, intended to help us do privacy-preserving collaborative computations. Um, again, if you look at the core components here, that's running over Intel SGX and ARM, um, but if this is looking like a kind of architecture which fits one of your conditions, pay attention to this now. We have Keystone, which is going over risk via RISC-V architecture. It is importantly focusing on that modular TEE design. So if you are interested in being really at that level and working over that secure primitive interoperability situation, this is the area to pay more attention. Then we have Grameen, right? We're moving on to only Intel-based. This is helping us to enable legacy Linux applications to work inside of Enclave. So all of these are aspects of this portfolio that can help you to bring together this architecture. You can use Oculum. That helps you to run these legacy applications. Uh, it has a slightly different set of core, com core components that are relevant to uh, memory safety focus. Um, Open Enclave SDK, uh, it's our unified uh, API for TEE applications. Um, it works across most of our uh, platforms. Um, Verizon, this one, is a very active project, um, and it's one that I see uh, implemented probably the most because it provides a lot of value. So what we're doing here is uh, allowing attestation verification, and we are showing and sort of time stamping and allowing us to understand the providence over time along inside of these protocols. Um, this part, I'll be very honest with you, as soon as we get down to the attestation protocols, that is the end of my understanding of this technical space but I will point you to the documentation that I continuously read until I do understand it. Uh, let's move on to AMD-based platforms. So you've got Coconut SVM. So if you're working on confidential uh, VM space, this is one of the projects that you probably will have heard of. It has a lot of crossover in the cloud space. Um, this is a very cool place to be paying attention to embedding of our hypervisor functions. Uh, there is Islet. I think Islet's really interesting because it provides us some of our best examples of uh, real use cases around IoT. Um, this kind of project is interested in embedding confidential computing into things like uh, your automated driving systems. Uh, there is also Verti, which is AMD and Intel based. Uh, this is one of our newer projects. So this is helping us to simplify the virtualization process. Um, this is a new project which could use some more support and engagement, um, but they do focus on Rust. So I think there are a lot of developers that could come in and engage in this space and learn by collaborating over this one. And on time, we have a new project uh, that is getting announced uh, this week, so there should be a blog available to give you more details. But I think this project shows us the maturity of this ecosystem and what we should be expecting moving forward. So what they're trying to do is provide you a confidential data clean room, and that will then integrate with Jupyter Notebooks. So if the idea of, right, follow from the Anaconda talk that we had before, a reproducible pipeline over a confidential TEE. There are many conditions where that is important to have. And I will leave you with the three calls for our mentorship program, which will also give you a little bit more insight into what these projects actually feel like for developers. So for Islet, we've got a mentorship opportunity, which is one of those rare, run, rare, rare ones where they really just need supply chain and security assistance. Um, so I think you can come in and have a developer learn about confidential computing and engage with this developer team 
over this project. Um, and again, that's for someone that's really interested in this development space in the IoT area. Then Verizon has really, uh, has two mentorship opportunities coming up that I think are really cool. Um, so especially if you care about this like ratification and making sure that, um, that we can use and verify and provide a like ready to go confidential environment. Um, so they are trying to uh, strengthen their CoRAM manifest and I do have more details on this if you'd like them. Uh, skills needed, understanding of RATS architecture. Yes, this is a little bit more advanced than your typical mentorship thing, but we have three uh, mentors on that main maintaining team who would be working with you on this. And the second opportunity falls along that line as well, harmonizing open source verifiers with RATS standards. Um, so I will be making these available. I received these mentorship opportunities just last week. Uniquely with CCC, we are a small, very focused security unit within LF. These mentorship opportunities are open and available for the right person to take on at any time. We do not go by cohorts, we go by opportunity. So if this feels like something that would be a good fit for you or someone you know, then get in touch with the CCC. Lastly, if you care about this and you're gonna be at uh, KubeCon, you will see these around and I'll have them available online. I have collected every single confidential computing learning opportunity and I have supplemented them with learning opportunities at our booth. So if you wanna come learn about ratification, all of that, but uh, you've made it very easy for me, thank you CCC members, because it all starts on the first day at 2.30 p.m. where you can go to a literal hands-on workshop. And if you go to the hands-on workshop first, you'll save me a lot of questions at the booth. Go there. Okay. I think that's it. We had 15. <laughs> <laughs>